Marto, you're on the island broadcasting out of your shed, mate. A fascinating thing with the photo set you've seen. That's exactly the same gear. It's called the Bionic Studio. That's what we use. Oh, right. Oh. Well, mate, the, the problem is, after 21 years continuously on Triple M in Brizzy here, or Triple M Radio, um, they finally helped me set up a studio and said, you can do one or two days a week from the island, which and I told them there was a bombing emergency and they fell for it. So I did the show from here. But unfortunately, kookaburras played a role mm. and a bird called a curlew, which you may not know, it makes a noise like someone's murdering it. And my dog featured on the radio show this morning, so it was all wind, wind all round, mate. And now, as soon as I wrap up this with you, I can go surfing and fishing. No, see, hang on. See, I heard dog before as well. So th- there was question number one. Look, you've got two computer screens here. You've got a microphone. I was thinking, what, did he truck yep. all the stuff over by himself? He set it up by himself. He opened those laptops. He downloaded yep. the programs. He did all of this by himself. That's incredible, mate. Mm, and. In the same way that you set up your studio by yourself, uh, no, yeah. we have ner- we have nerds in Australia that assist us with technical <laughs> technical needs, and they're yes. brilliant. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. The other thing is in your shed. So you're not even allowed to actually in the house because you'll be too noisy in the house, won't you? So you actually, go out to your shed. That that's why I'm in the shed, so I don't wake Mrs. Marto up. Mm. And uh, she promised to bring me bacon and eggs at eight o'clock this morning because we've got a producer who often goes and gets us breakfast because we're in the, we're we're at work from four o'clock onwards. Sure. No, Mrs. Marto woke up at nine o'clock. She heard the last bit we do, and our last bit on radio today was um, Chi Hu. You had to do the largest Chi Hu um, because we're all behind Samoa on of course, Sunday morning. Mate. You know that uh, rugby league World Cup. So you won Guns N' Roses tickets. There's a big concert on in Brizzy on Tuesday night. It's the loudest cheer-hoo. So it, uh, Cass said, you call that a job? And I went, <laughs> yep, sure do. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure you still call it a pay packet, love. Did you? No, you wouldn't have said that, would you? Now? Oh. No, they're probably... No, 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 I'm, no. Not, I'm not like that. The other thing is, is that she looking... didn't come into the shed though. Well, there's, no, and there's nothing for her in there because the photos you've shown me of it, it's a perfect man shed. There's nowhere to sit. There's nothing comfortable. There's nothing at all girly inside that shed. There's nothing. No reason a woman would go in there because if she sits down, she's going to stand up and go, "Oh, what's that on my dress? What, what have I just sat on?" It's perfect, mate. Don't change it. Nineteen years we've had this joint, or maybe twenty. Anyway, um, she has never crossed the threshold. There's two entry points. She looks in and she goes, ooh, it's a barren landscape for females in here. It's wonderful, mate. You'll have to join me one day for a beer. Yeah, I'm going to, mate. I've absolutely, it's on my, I've absolutely on the bucket list. One day cricket, yeah. you've got a series versus uh, England going on at the moment. Look, this is how much the millennials mm. have affected my life. I turned on to watch last night, Greg, and I, could, I couldn't watch. It was mm. taking too long. I couldn't watch it. I was just thinking, T20, this is what they've done to me. Oh, that's a great call. I was the same. I jumped in a couple of times, listened to it on the radio, watched a little bit on TV and went, oh, hold on. And if you don't know, and it was a big result, we beat England in the first of the one days, the world champ, recently crowned T20 one day champion. Um, yes, it does take too long. 50 overs is far too much. Is it the death of the 50 over yeah. game? Yeah, it is. I think, I think it may be. But thank God we beat England, a bunch of hungover world champions uh, i don't know how much you take out of that uh, it's what a load of rubbish the whole anyway well anyway, we got yeah we, we got, got that we still got football going we got we got india here at the moment as well t20s there's meant to be one in wellington tonight oh. but it's raining but it's just it just feels weird after a t20 world cup can't you give us a break for a couple of weeks or something You've got to yeah. squeeze more cash out. anyway let's give talk rest, let's right? you know let's talk football because that's what we're talking about um obviously the whole of Aotearoa has gone to Samoa for this game. We have to, mate. I mean, you know, there's 200,000 people in Samoa. I mean, you, tell me tell me a little town or a city in Australia with these 200,000 people. What would that be? Sort of somewhere in Queensland. Gold Coast. I would think they've got about 250,000, so which is about as big as Samoa, the Gold Coast. So haven't you got 180,000 of them in New Zealand? Yeah, no, we have. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, you've got the biggest Polynesian, well, the biggest Polynesian population outside of Polynesia, I think, lives here. So basically, it's the Gold Coast versus Australia, right? That's that's what that's what they're up against. Yes, that's that's correct. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though, we had a lot. We had a lot of Samo- Samo- Aussies, we call them, so Samoan Aussies, uh, rang us this morning. There's a couple of March. It's really gone. It's gone mad, mate. Um, Samoan flags as big as the car. Yeah, People brilliant. driving around. Brilliant, cops brilliant. not picking them up. Cops usually cops to be right onto that. If you flew an Australian flag, you'd get a fine, a hundred forty dollar fine, and one point off your license. But no, apparently they're picking up Samoans. Going, 
Uh, just take it easy, boys, because they're not—they're not drunk. No, so no, they're no, just having fun. Loving it, yeah. man. There's a rally on today. It starts in the car park of one of the local KFCs, which is just gold. But that's yeah, they that's love brilliant. a chicken. The they do. They, 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 they love it, of course, it. mate. Yeah. yeah I mean, this is they the, just love life. They, that's the thing. And I tell you what, they love is they love their teams and they know how to support them. And it's something that we can get a lesson off, mate, especially in this country. Yeah, bloody oath. bloody oath, and they're singing. Hey, have you heard the Rock? You should get that on your show today. The Rock has been badgered all week by a, by an Instagram account called NRL Roast. They've been asking him every day to do a due out to um, the, the Samoan brothers, and he fi- they finally got him. It only happened a, an hour or so ago. Finally, The Rock, I think he read most of it, well, in between a wait, he was giving them a shout-out, which would just tick every Samoan pink. Mate, I'd love to see Samoa win, but um, first half, they'll go, well, you know, it'll be one of those traditional... Like you guys, New Zealand, the Kiwi um, rugby league team last week. First half, magnificent. Full of venom for you. And the second half, we'll just squeeze yeah, them yeah, and that'll yeah. be the end. Yeah, yeah, Greg Martin, day. Triple M out of Brisbane. We've also got, <coughs> excuse me, our women versus your women as well. That's going to be a much closer game, I reckon. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I haven't done my preview for that fixture. That's the first I knew it was on. So uh, I'll okay, let you. Okay, right, okay. Well, well, that's going to be a lot. It's a big deal here. Women's in his... Rugby League. Like, mate, hold on. Women's Rugby League World Cup. How many teams played in it? Four? Wait until you get more teams and then have a World Cup. Okay. All right, that's fine. I mean, it was just that we're on a roll with this at the moment because the Black Ferns won, of course. I mean, we're embracing it. We're just in love with women's sport here in the country at the moment. Woo, woo, woo. Hey. That was magnificent. Yeah, yeah that, it was, mate. That, that's proper. That's what we, that was proper. That was a magnificent game. Congratulations. The Black Ferns were magnificent. I'll herald that. But don't... We've spoken about this before. Don't throw nonsense at me. Throw proper stuff at me and I'll watch. Ever anyway. been to Twickers, mate? Have you, did you play there? Never played for the Wallabies there. Played for Queensland. We played oh, someone there one day. And, of course, I've commentated there many times. I was there when we won the 1991 World Cup against uh, England. England. Yep. Um, I was about five metres behind the Queen. She's tiny. She could fit on a... She could be one of those little dolls on the yachting I mean, That was the best I ever did. But um, what a place, mate. Full of hooray, Harry, mm. and drunken idiots. It's... Uh, Oh, you got England this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. I know. Right. Oh, this is the litmus well, test for the All Blacks. I mean, Ireland. look, okay, so Dave Rennie in charge, loses to Italy. Dave Rennie taking you to World Cup. Dave Rennie's future post World Cup is? Don't, don't, don't talk to me about Dave Rennie. Don't mm. talk to me about him, Dave Rennie. I finally broke my silence this week and called for his sacking. Listen, do you know the story of um, Helen of Troy and the Trojan yeah, horse? Yep, you know yep. that story mm-hmm. where, where they presented a gift? They wheeled it inside the castle, and then out came, or, and out come all the soldiers, and they attacked the um, the host. So that's Dave Rennie. You sent him over here to completely destroy the game of Australian rugby, completely destroy Australian rugby. So Dave, the Trojan horse, I'm calling him. You have done this deliberately. No, you would have accused Robbie Deans of the same, I suppose, back in the day. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, done so it twice to it. Right, right, right. The other thing about so, that stupid on. bloody what, story, mate, let's just back the track. Hang on a second. So you're talking about sometime in 5,000 years ago that they were besieging mm. a city. They just happened to be able to build mm. this huge horse where no one actually noticed them building on, it. On, on, on wheels. Then they trucked it up on wheels and it had so many goddamn soldiers in it that when it was inside the gates, it could take over a whole city and kill an army of thousands. I mean, come on, man. This That's is correct. It's not real. It's bloody been made up. How big was the horse? It would have had to be the size of a 10-storey building. Well, 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 I'm going to ring Israel to allow if you continue with this oh, tone here we of go. voice. Like, right, yeah, good point. We're, we're talking, we're talking the whole biblical yeah. tales. Okay. What else don't you believe? I don't know. Don't you believe the budding of Red Sea? Do you, what? Do you not believe the loaves and fishes story? The, oh, come on. I don't believe, I don't believe that Bernard Foley actually was genuine when he said he didn't know they'd kick the ball out. That's another fairy tale, mate. He bloody knew the ref said to him a hundred times, kick it out, mate. He didn't hear him. The crowd was too loud. Sorry, that's right. The crowd was too loud. Anyway, he's learned his lesson. I like, uh, there was somebody at Wobby Training, one of the journos this week, asked if Bernard thought he was too old. At 32, he might be 33. 
pointed at Johnny Sexton to make a very good point. Johnny Sexton's 37 and still dominates. Yeah, how did so he get the world? The Irish 5-8. Bloody hell. I mean, fair, fair, fair. The other thing is, Rassi Erasmus has been banned by World Rugby for a couple of <laughs> tweets he's put out there. Well, okay, how about this, Greg? How about World Rugby gets banned for actually coming out with that statement saying that rugby's going to overtake the United States sporting market? I mean, if, if one person could get banned for a stupid tweet, why can't they? So true. That could be in the Bible as, a, as another twisted tale. Yeah. Uh, it could be an extra chapter. The New Testament, World Rugby's proclamations over the last 10 years. What yeah. about the prodigal son, finally? Greg Martin out of Australia with us, Novak. Hey. He was banished to the Badlands, was Novak. Nobody wanted him out of Australia, Novak. And then all of a sudden, oh, we need you for the Australian Open because we didn't sell as many tickets last time. Welcome back, prodigal son. Yeah, this is fair income. We changed broadcasters here in Australia from Channel 7. have always run the Australian Open. It was fabulous and made lots of money for the TV. Everyone watched it. It went to uh, Channel 9 and no one watched it this year. And they're going, ooh, hold on, hold on. So they've knocked on the door of the government and said, listen, what, what, what was all that about? Let us have Novak. And they have. So I believe TV stations not only run the rugby, they decide how long the game goes for, when the second half starts, when the ads are finished. They now run. Um, they now run Australian tennis. They uh, they now run the immigration department out mm, there. Quite so clear. Mm. What I'm led to believe. One, one final topic. Ian Thorpe wants humans who yes. remove their penises to compete in the in the pool with humans who didn't have a penis when they were born. Are you in favour of this? Wow. I haven't. I, I haven't heard this story. Is that like? A keel like the penis. Yeah, so, does well, uh, the quite clearly, through the water. That's it. I mean, it's a, it's unfair. So, if you remove the penis, then you should be able to swim with the ones without the penises, shouldn't you? That's what Ian's saying. Yes, I believe that's what. It, do you know that Ian has webbed feet? So he had an unfair advantage. So that's virtually performance drugs equivalent. If you were born with webbed feet, of course you were going to be a swimmer. You got water. That what's going on down there? He can't wear thongs, apparently that he can bloody swim, I would disregard everything Ian Thorpe says.